I know many of you may be wondering, what do you mean God doesn't want my sacrifice? Well, God doesn't. He doesn't want your sacrifice without having your obedience first. And I'm going to talk about that today using Saul's story of how he wanted to offer God a sacrifice after he sinned and how God felt about that. This is Spoken Word. Hey, what's going on everyone? Hey, listen, before we get started, if you don't mind, just go ahead and take one second and hit that subscribe button. And if you want, hit that like button. <laughs> the way YouTube is set up, it won't send us to the people around the world until we hit certain subscriptions and likes. So if you don't mind helping me, go ahead and hit that button for me. Thank you. And I really want to say thank you for those of you who have been riding with me from day one. I know it's only a couple weeks old, but thank you so much. You really, really don't even know how much I appreciate it. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's jump in. So many people believe that even though there's a chance that they could be wrong or that they may be misinterpreting a scripture, they believe that it's okay to take the chance and do it or accept it because they mean well or because they have convinced themselves that they're doing it for a good reason. You know, we say to ourselves, you know, why would God be upset when I'm doing it for him? And if I'm being honest, let me tell you, I understand that, I really do. But my opinion doesn't count, nor does it matter. Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 1 to see what God thinks, since how he feels is the only thing that matters. Verse 1, Samuel said to Saul, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you king over his people, Israel. So listen now to the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they ambushed them as they came up from Egypt. So God wants Saul to destroy the Amalekites because they ambushed his people without cause. He said in verse three, now go attack the Amalekites and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them, put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camel and donkey. These instructions are important because it's where we find out what God is expecting. Saul is supposed to destroy every single one of them in everything they had. Now, I know that this may seem harsh, it sounds harsh, but the Amalekites are a people that hated Israel and they attacked them repeatedly beginning at the crossing of the Jordan River. And if they didn't completely destroy them, they would keep attacking them and the other nations. They would also make it harder for them to possess the very land that God had promised to them. So even though it sounds harsh, we have to trust God. These people, the Amalekites, they were evil. So verses four and six lets us know that Saul gathered 200,000 soldiers, 10,000 soldiers from Judah, and he set up an ambush for the Amalekites. While waiting, he let the Canaanites leave because unlike the Amalekites, they showed kindness to them when they left Egypt. Let's pick this back up from verse seven. Then Saul attacked the Amalekites all the way from Havlah to Shur near the eastern border of Egypt. He took Agag, a king of the Amalekites alive and all of his people he totally destroyed with the sword. But Saul and his army spared Agag and the best of his sheep and cattle, the fat calves and the lambs and everything that was good. These they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was despised and weak, they totally destroyed. Verse seven and nine lets us know that Saul and his army kept the king of the Amalekites alive and the best of the animals because his soldiers were unwilling to destroy the things they saw as good. These scriptures are important because they let us know what they did versus what God instructed them to do and why. Verse 10, then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. I regret that I have made Saul king because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was angry and he cried out to the Lord all that night. 
So as we can see, God made it clear to Samuel that Saul did not follow the instructions. And because of Saul's disobedience, it made God regret making him king. This would be like someone being elevated to a minister, elder, or a pastor, and God telling them to only teach what his word says, but instead they do the opposite. Their actions would displease God and make him regret ever elevating them if he ever did to begin with. Verse 12 tells us what Saul did next. Saul made a monument to honor himself and then went to Gilgal where he was met by the prophet Samuel. When Samuel reached him, Saul said, the Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. This scripture is so important because it shows us that he sincerely believed that he had done everything that God asked. When he said, the Lord bless you, it shows us that he was excited to see Samuel, knowing that they had just defeated the Amalekites. And Saul saying that he has carried out the Lord's instructions that he gave establishes that he didn't feel like he had disobeyed God. But how could he feel that way, right? Well, listen, let's make sure we see ourselves in, in Saul as we're reading it. And you'll see why. The next couple of verses explains why he felt that way. Verse 14. But Samuel said, what then is the sound of the sheep in my ears? What is the noise of the cattle that I hear? Saul answered in verse 15, the soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. They spared the best of the sheep and the cattle to sacrifice to the Lord your God. But we totally destroyed the rest. <laughs> to us being on the outside, it should seem clear to us that Saul disobeyed God. But to him, he didn't see the harm in keeping the animals alive so that they could be used as a sacrifice to God. He even pointed out that he was led to do this by the desires of his soldiers. And this is we've all experienced this. We've all been influenced in the wrong way to do wrong by our peers, our friends and our family members, whether it was intentionally or not. We've all done what Saul did. We've looked in the scriptures and we've seen that God says, I do not permit or I don't suffer or I don't allow this or I don't, I don't want that. I reject that. And we still decided, you know what? This can't be bad. He can't mean me. And we decided to do it anyways, believing that God's going to overlook it. But we're all about to learn the truth about God. We're all about to really see how God really feels and responds to our disobedience. Verse 16. Enough, Samuel said to Saul. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Tell me, Saul replied. Samuel said, although you were once small in your own eyes, did you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel. And he sent you on a mission saying, go and completely destroy those wicked people, the Amalekites. Wage war against them until you have wiped them out. Why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you pounce on and plunder and do evil in the eyes of the Lord? Samuel's words here shows us how God views Saul's actions. He says Saul's actions were evil. This is something that we have to make sure that we're not guilty of because when we go against what God's word says, God sees the action as evil. I hope we really see this clearly. I hope that we can really understand this. I hope I'm making it clear enough for everybody to understand. Now let's look at his response to Samuel. Saul said in verse 20, but I did obey the Lord. Saul said, I went on the mission the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agag, their king. The soldiers took the sheep and the cattle from the plunder, the best of what was devoted to God in order to sacrifice them to the Lord your God at Gilgal. Notice what Samuel says next, verse 22. But Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice. Hold up. Let me read it again. 22 says, but Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice. Now, let me stop real quick. Because Samuel is letting us know that regardless of his reasons and why he feels it's okay, God would rather have his obedience than his sacrifice. God would rather have our obedience than our sacrifice because we can't be blessed disobeying God. All right, let's continue. And to heed is better than the fat of the rams. Verse 23, for rebellion is like the sin of deviation. 
in arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the words of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Whew. This is a lot to unpack. Saul clearly believes that he followed what God told him to do. He even pointed out that he did it for God. But Samuel makes it very clear to Saul that he was wrong and it shows him as it shows us a serious lesson. No action that we do regardless of the good intent, if it goes against what God's word says, or if it changes the desired intent of what God said he wanted, it is considered evil in the eyes of God. Saul sinned by following his assumptions. Verse 24. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I was afraid of the men and so I gave in to them. Now I beg you, forgive my sins and come back with me so that I may worship the Lord. This is an amazing passage. I mean, this is an amazing passage for leaders to remember and take note. Because Saul disobeyed God because he feared the soldiers. Instead of him leading the people and ensuring that they obey God, he let them lead him. He chose to follow the people rather than God. The same God that he just watched empower them to defeat the Amalekites. It's a shame. For anyone who thinks that God will forgive Saul, especially after he begged for forgiveness, you will be wrong. Verse 26 says, But Samuel said to him, I will not go back with you. You have rejected the word of the Lord and the Lord has rejected you as king over Israel. Just like Moses, God holds his leaders to a higher standard because as they go, so do the people. Moses wasn't allowed to enter into the promised land and Saul had his kingdom taken away from him all because they both decided to disobey God. And guess what happened to Saul later on? Later on, he was killed by an Amalekite, but I'll discuss that later. Before I finish, let me make something clear to everyone. God will not accept anything that he has called evil. And I know I've said, I feel like I've said it over and over and over, but I really want us to catch this. God is not going to accept what he has called evil or what he has said is wrong. Let's remember Cain. Cain made an offering to God from the ground, the same ground that God said was cursed and God rejected it. And remember, it was cursed because of Adam and Eve's sins. How do you offer God something that God said is evil or is, is cursed? God said that the Amalekites were wicked and evil, as well as everything that they had. So why would God accept an offering made from the very thing that he has called evil? Anything that God says is wrong will be rejected. This is why God doesn't want your sacrifice, because if your sacrifice doesn't come with your obedience, then it's considered evil. I hope this lesson has blessed you and I hope that it helps all of us to become more obedient because not only does God love you, but I love you too. And I really want to say thank you for sticking through this video all the way to the end. And before you leave, if you don't mind, leave a comment. I don't care if it's a thumbs up, if it's googly eyes, if it's a mean face, just leave a comment. I appreciate it. And also like, subscribe and hit the notification bell right there. <laughs> I'll see you next time. All right now, this is Spoken Word, and I'm Jeremiah. Peace.